Today's reading is from Chon Sung Gyung, Book 5, Chapter 4, Section 3 to 12. Love's original nature is to live for the sake of others. Giving to others from within one's original essence is the nature of love. Where did that love come from? It came from God. Since God is the subject partner of absolute love, the original nature of love is giving. Parent love is the closest to that original nature. That's why parents always want to give to their children. If your child does not accept your love, you should show that child even greater love. Then even a child who behaves like a footlum will be able to repent and turn around. A Jew. The title of my sermon is The, the Book of Love Written by God. Uh, I chose this title because this is one of my strengths during the time that I needed something to hold on to. Um, and I will tell you about it in the end of my sermon. So everybody seeks for happiness and better family life. And as a child, especially, we always wanted to receive love from our parents. Or as an individual, we wanted to receive love from our you know, friends, families, you know, from everyone. Um, when I was a little girl, um, I feel like, you know, our family is the best family in the whole world because there's full of love and, you know, full of inspiration. My mom and dad always um, hugging each other. You know, he sh they show us how they love each other and they ha how much they love us. Mm, we always go to church every Sunday and, you know, we do everything together as a family. But back in 1998, that family falls apart because my mom, she passed away. And uh, she was 35 years old. And um, she got a cancer. And you know, we, as uh, young kids, we didn't know what to do because you know, we lived with my dad. And my dad didn't know what to do because he's a very young man. So, um, he decided just to leave us to our grandparents, and we stay with our grandparents for about three years, and um, I can say that my grandparents is my, my grandmother, she's my superhero because she did everything for us, everything. So she loves us like more than anything. Um, after three years, then my dad decided to take us back from my grandparents, from my grandmother. Um, I thought it was the best day of my life because I'm going to be with my father again, my, my dad. But um, things just change. It's just dramatically changed because um, my dad just changed a lot. So I didn't know that he, you know, he got married again, and he just don't know how to balance the family between the first family and the second family. So um, he have a lot of stress. So every time he gets stressed, he can't take out in anyone. So he start beating us. So um, yeah, um, as a little girl, I didn't understand my dad because um, I really love him and he really loves us. It's just things just, just change and as a girl, I don't, at least a little girl, I didn't know why he changed so much and every time something happened then he just kind of come and beat us. But yeah, we lived like that for about three years with my dad but the last time that he beats me, I can't take it anymore. You know, I was, I was so in pain, not physically because I was numb already. You know, he hits me and then I don't feel anything. Just, you know, I feel the pain in my heart, but um, um, I, just, I just can't take it anymore. So I told my, my dad that time, like, you know, I'm, I'm leaving and then, I was going to school, but my dad said, you know, I feel the pain in his heart because 
of what he have done. And, but I don't feel anything anymore. I don't, I don't know him anymore. So he says like, okay, just come back in the afternoon, six o'clock. I'm like, I'm not coming back. And then he was like, you know, no, you have to come back early. I'm like, okay. And then, you know, I feel my dad is a very good man. He's, he's very responsible man, but then he cannot, he don't know how to balance the situation. So I left and I didn't come back in the house. So I decided to leave by myself and um, I don't know where to go. I was 17 and I just bring my school bag. So uh, I live everywhere and I live, you know, I sleep outside the church. I sleep where there's a lot of people walking. So, you know, outside the mall. But then I, I met my friend and she told me that she will help me. So I trusted her a lot and so she helped me up, but everything that she did for me, I, there's a condition, like, you know, um, one of that condition, I remember one time I was so hungry and, you know, I was 17 and I really want to eat and, you know, I was like, I'm so hungry and I don't know where to get money. And, you know, she tell me like, okay, I will give you money but in one condition. So I'm like, I will take everything. I'm so hungry. I was so hungry. So she said like, okay, I have an enemy. Beat her up and I'll pay you. So it's like, it was a good deal because I know martial arts. So <laughs> it's, um, I, I didn't beat her up because I hate her too, but because I want to eat. So I look at her like a food, so I have to eat. So that happened. I beat her up. And she paid me and I ate, you know, I was like, now I'm, I eat food, so I was so happy. But then that night, she invited me to a beach. So I went with her and with her friends. So they were drinking and doing all this young people stuff. So I went, I, sit, I sat down, you know, beside, I think the beach. And then um, I was thinking, is this gonna be my life? I left home because I want to be successful and show to my dad that I was successful. I become successful without him. Then I prayed at night. Since my mom passed away, I don't believe in God anymore because I feel like, you know, he's not real because he, you know, my mom died and this all things happens to us and. But then that time, that night, I asked him one more time, if you're really there, then you have to give me the answer. You know, um, I have a classmate. When I was in high school, I studied martial arts, Tong Il Mudo, and then I have a classmate, and he's always there. And when I left home, he always, you know, he sold me one time outside the church and sleeping there, and then he told me, like, you have to come with me. And then I told him, no, leave me alone because every time he follows me, wherever I go, he follows me. He's my spiritual father. And uh, he follows me wherever I go. It's so annoying. It was so annoying because, you know, wherever I go, he follows me. I'm like, leave me alone. You know, I don't want to see you anymore. And then he keeps following me. Thanks, God. And like, he keeps, you know, he, he didn't give up. And then that night, I, I asked God, so if this is the life that you want me, do you want for me, I will accept it. But I want to be a successful in life. And I want to go back to my hometown and show it to my dad. So I asked two, two, um, I asked, uh, two questions to him, and then I told him, give me an answer. So the first thing that I asked was, am I going to stay like this forever? Am I going to stay with my friends and, you know, be like this forever? And then I don't see any answer to that. So I'm like, okay, let, I'm going to ask one more time. So I ask him again, am I going to go with my classmate, you know, the Tong El Mudo, and then go with him because he said there's a beautiful place in there. And there's like, in one second, there's like, there's a big, huge bird flew in front of me, same size as me the big wings. 
I didn't say, God, thank you for this, you know, answer. I ran away. I was so scared. So I, like, I ran so fast. But the next day, I realized that God's answered my prayer. So I went with him. So I went to the center. And, you know, I was studying divine principle and stuff like that. And at that morning, he told me, my spiritual father told me, do not go out in your room, in the sister's room. And I'm like, why? And then he says, like, we're going to do something at 5 o'clock. They're doing hondoke. You know, for the young members, we don't understand what is that. So I saw my spiritual father and all the brothers and sisters, they bowing on the picture, and I ran away. Because I felt like, oh, are they cold or something? And then I ran away, and, you know, I just don't want to accept that. Why are they bowing in the pictures and so? So, but my spiritual father keeps following me and telling me, you know, this is something that, you know, we're doing, we're praying and so stuff like that. So please come back to the center. So I believe in him and I don't have anywhere to go. That's why I have to come back. And after that, I become a full-time member. But uh, it's not that, you know, I accept, you know, right away two parents. I've been pool type for one year, but I don't believe in true parents. I, I'm doing fundraising, witnessing, I'm doing everything, but I still don't believe that he's the Messiah. So after that, back in 2004, my central figure said, oh, um, true parents are coming. So you, everybody needs to make a condition so you can receive true parents. But me and my best friend, we have crazy um, condition. So we said that in our condition, we will do fasting, bowing, everything. So we did that. And we want to know if he's really the Messiah. So, you know, I, we talk to each other. We pray about it. Like, you know, if he's a Messiah, he will show his face to us. Because no one can see him. Nobody can see him. Only, you know, the leaders inside. So we were waiting outside the hall, the, outside the hotel. And um, every, there's 10 cars. And they said the middle one... That's where true parents, true parents sitting, true parents at. So I'm like, okay. So everything cars, everything passed already. And me and my best friend, we said, like, he's not the Messiah because he didn't, you know, he didn't show his face to us. So we lose hope. Then the last car was uh, the security car. And we thought that everything, all our prayers are just, we just wasted it and, you know. But, you know, when the security car passed, two father opened the window. He gave us a smile, and he waved his hands, just the two of us, you know, and he closed it again. So everything, like, all the, everything that, you know, we were, like, thinking, like, he's not the Messiah. I mean, that condition is really crazy condition. Do not ever do that, because true parents is the Messiah. But we just want to prove to ourselves, and... Um, yeah, then back then, um, that time I realized that I have to do my mission really seriously. And so I did my MFT life in the Philippines. And every time I struggle, my mom is not a member. She was not a member. But every time I struggle, she appeared in my dreams and told me, you know, don't give up. Just keep going because God is not done writing your love story. So... Like, every time, like, I struggle, I always follow what my mom said because, you know, even she's not a member, like, in my dream, she is, like, you know. Um, so my central figure told me that they will send a missionary to America, and um, she, they told us that you have to go. And then before my interview, I dream of my mom, and then she was giving me a snow. I don't know for what reason. So at that time, I didn't realize that she will tell me that you're going to pass the interview and you're going to America. And so I passed the interview, and I came here in America. I became an um, Asian team missionary. And after that, they sent me to a witnessing in 4 West 43rd Street. And I became Reverend Munshi Kim secretary. So that time, I was doing my mission, but suddenly my central figure said, okay, please uh, sign up your application for matching. And so there's nine brothers that time, including my husband, and all of them are Spanish. And then my central figure said, okay, choose one. 
And then I'm like, because I was the only sister, and I'm, but I told him, no, I don't want to choose because I don't want to be responsible for my marriage. And so I'm like, no. And then, so he, then my son, I did, we didn't know, me and my husband, we didn't know that they're making a condition for me and my husband already. But my central figure is trying to know if I'm ready or not. So they told me that, are you, re are you really ready for the blessing? I'm like, yes. And I said, like, okay, are you ready to get matched with a 63-year-old guy? And so I am a human being. I cannot say, of course, I didn't say yes. Like, you know, I struggle a lot. But then um, I told my central figure, like, you know, if that's really the person who will help me to grow and who will help me to change my life and, you know, to feel love to true parents, then I will accept him. Yeah, so, but before that, we're writing an application. Sorry, Papa, but I have to tell them. Um, we're writing an application, and then so Reverend Munshi Kim told me that, okay, check all the application of the brothers, and then maybe they miss something, and then you have to tell them. So I was sitting with my husband. I call him Kuya in my language, his older brother. So I told him, Kuya, are you done? And then he was saying like, oh, yes, I'm done. So can I read your application? And then here. It's like, you know, he gave me. And then, you know, I, I read the qualification of the wife, like, you know, the woman who loved true parents, the woman who's responsible and, you know, who's going to be a better life, a better mother to my kids. At the end, there's a big letter that, that, there that no Filipina. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I was like, you are so bad. Why you put it there? And, you know, we Filipina, we are a happy people. We are, we are so loud, and you know, but we are happy people. You know, we are really. The, and my husband is, you know, very opposite than loud. So, I think, you know. Then my central figure, the next, the next morning, he told me, so you already have a match. So I was expecting that old man walking inside and like, inside the room, and then I'm like oh, what am I going to do, and how am I going to greet him, and, you know, how, how am I going to react? But still, I went inside the prayer room, and my central figure said, okay, you already match, and then I'm like, who? And then he says, Miguel. There's two Miguel there, the small one and my husband. <laughs> and I'm like, who? And then he said, Miguel, the tall one. Oh, I'm dead. I'm like, he's not going to accept me. <laughs> but still... I told uh, my central figure, of course, I will accept whoever. Then I think we met after, you know, we, I get matched. And he asked me, oh, I hear your match. And then I can't tell him that it was you because maybe he will cancel me right away. So I just say, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know. And, but at the end, he said, like, you know, we, my central figure asked us to talk. And he said, you're different than them, that's why I accept you. So I don't know what's the difference, but he said I'm different than them. So yeah, we accept the matching and then we go through the blessing. We get blessed in 2009. It was True Parents' 90th birthday. But before the blessing, before the matching, I pray to God that, you know, I don't ask for a rich person or, you know, I don't ask for, you know, the perfect man. I just want the person who will change me and who will love me who, the way I am. So I asked God to give me that person, but he gave me the best that he has. That's my husband. Um, stand up, Papa. <laughs> My husband helps me to grow, not only like as a young woman, but he helps me a lot, actually. And he's the reason why me and my father have the good relationship. When we get blessed, he pushed me to call my dad, and I said no. And then he told me, he's your dad. You have to call him. So we call my dad. He called. You called Papa, right? He called my dad, and I talked to him. But the first thing that my dad said is not like, you know, sorry or something. He said, the first words that I hear from my father was, I'm so proud of you. 
And um, I still hate him, but you know, he said sorry for what I've done and sorry because you know we have this kind of situation and you know. Um, my husband is my dad's favorite son-in-law because you know he he's the reason why we you know we become better. We have a better relationship with my dad. So my husband helps me to be a confident woman, to be a better woman, because um, I lose hope. When I was a little kid, I don't know, like, I didn't feel like, you know, I'm going to feel the life you know, that, that other people have, the life that, you know, a woman who's worthy to receive love. But he gave me a husband who will makes me feel like I'm a princess, who will make me feel that, you know, I can be respected, and I can do everything. So I didn't share my experiences to you because I want you to feel pity on me. I want to share it to you because I want you to know, like, you know, in everything that happening in our life, there's something like God prepared, good thing for us. So my realization with all my experience is no matter how hard our life is, we need to trust everything to God because we might, we might have the most difficult life, but God is with us. He's always there, even if we deny it, but he's still there. He will tell you, you know, you might not feel it, but, you know, he will send someone, maybe your parents, maybe your friends, maybe your angry neighbors or whoever, but, you know, God will send someone. So God is always with us 24 hours. You know, even you're sleeping, and we, even I think whatever we're doing, he's with us. <clears throat> but we need, we need to tell ourselves, we need to give him a chance to work with us. Because, you know, God always wanted to work with us, but if your heart, our heart is closed, then he cannot come and help us. He cannot come and support us. He is our parents. We might go in a wrong way, but he's still with us no matter what. So I myself can testify with all my experience in life. You know, I thought life is miserable. I, li I thought life is gonna be that forever hard and you know it's like challenging and what else can I say everything like you know horrible life but I challenge myself to trust everything to God I thought I will never feel love that I'm longing for when I was a kid but God gave me a husband who will make me feel that I'm worthy to receive love that um that I am important in the eyes of God. And I'm worthy to have a good life. Mm -hmm. And God gave me two lovely sons. You know, every time I really want to hear my mom and dad like saying, I love you to me. But now, you know, God gave me two lovely sons who will tell me I love you, mama, every day. And also, my son teach me how to be a better person, you know, how to be a um, better mom, a, a better woman. They teach, us, uh, they, te they teach me how to be a confident mom. Even I, I'm a mother, I can do everything, and then every time I see them, I see hope. So what else I can ask for God? I can't ask anything for more. He gave me already everything. So if God gave me this blessing, he will give it to anyone. He will give it to all of us. But we have to keep trusting and believing to him, no matter what. And I would like to give a mess, uh, advice to young people in the community. Please let God finish your love story. Be patient and do the best that you can to prove God that you are willing to wait for the right time and right person. You know, God is still, especially second gen, God is writing the beautiful love story for all of you. 
but you know, please trust him and give all your trust to him, all your love to God. You know, God will give you the best one. He gave it to me. I can testify that he will give it to you too. But you have to wait. And sometimes I have a plan. So my plan is that I am going back to my hometown. And I will tell my dad and my stepmom that you know, I become successful. I am a different person than before. I have a plan. I have a rebellious plan. But you know, Sometimes God will destroy our plan, if that plan will destroy us. So even if we plan very good thing, a very bad thing for our parents to have a rebellious heart to our parents, God will not let us to do that. Um, our parents is working so hard for us, our physical parents just want you know, to give you advice that, you know, please love your parents back. You know, give love to your parents. Um, our parents is always th thinking about a uh, good thing for us. So please work with our parents and give them love. Um, right now, I work as a director of Blessed Family Ministry. As a person who helps families, I want everyone to have a good family life. I want always every child to feel the love of God from their parents. I want everyone, every couple to experience God's love to their marital relationship. I have a hard time as a child. I don't want to have that for anyone, especially second generation here in our community, or even especially to my children. Um, I'm trying to do my best um, to support my kids with my husband because I don't want them to feel the life that I've been through. Um, also to this precious second gen, I don't want you guys to experience that hard life. So even if someone go through challenges with God, there's always way out. Our loving heavenly parents is with us and give us a good life if we believe in. Mm. Yeah, um, I can say that life is short, and we only have a small time here on Earth. But let's just do our best to help our families. Be happy with our families. Be happy with our parents. And be happy that, to those people you met every single day, because we're going to stay here for a short time. But if we give love to them, then we can fulfill what our mission here on Earth. So let us thank God for giving us true parents and giving us such a wonderful and beautiful family, our life here on earth. Uh, let us all thank our true parents for putting us together to share as a brothers and sister. Thank you so much. And um, yes, I mean my dad. Yeah, my dad. He drink because, you know, as a young man, he don't know how to handle family, both family, first family and second family. But three years ago, my dad passed away. But we have a very good relationship with my dad, my children, and my husband. So I forgive my dad. He's my father. I love him so much. Um, I experience a lot of things, but, you know, no matter what happened, they are still our parents. He's still my dad, even if I say no, but he's still my father, and I owe my life to him. So. Thank you so much for listening to my sermon.